Okay, so let's just talk about some really nuts and bolts, basic, down to brass tacks, little facts about uh, exponentiating that's going to come in handy um, later in life. So the first thing is, of course, just what does it even mean? Well, of course, if I have something like, you know, some number a and I raise it to the fourth power, what that means is I just multiply a out by itself again and again until I do it four times. So that's all exponentiation means there. It's pretty simple. But you could do, of course, anything. You don't think that you're just restricted to a. <laughs> no way. Are you kidding? For example, you could take like a duck, right? And you can square a duck. Now, you probably said, gee, I haven't squared a duck recently. But if you were to square a duck, what would you get? You would get duck, duck, goose. Make your own joke, folks. OK, so anyway, the point is that just exponentiating, you just repeat that thing that number of times. So pretty straightforward. OK, but let me show you some little great pitfalls that people sometimes peer into. Uh, the first one is, well, so for example, if I just say something you know, really ridiculous, like if I say 3 squared, OK, well, the whole world would respond with 9. OK, fine. But what if I said minus 3 squared? Well, now the world might not be responding in, in perfect harmony because they might be saying a whole bunch of different things. Some people may say still 9 because they're thinking minus 3 times minus 3 would be positive 9, remembering correctly that negative times negative is positive. But there might be other people that are saying, well, wait a minute. Well, you know, 3 squared, that's still 9. I got a negative sign out in front, so it's negative 9. Aha! So is the answer 9 or negative 9? Well, the reality is, is that this is different from something else. And let me show you the other thing, and then maybe you can guess, since I'm telling you it's different, what the answer is. See, this is a little bit different. This is negative 3 quantity squared. So half the population that was saying, oh, negative 3 times negative 3, negative times negative is positive, they were actually doing this problem. This indeed equals 9. That negative sign was captured in there. Those people that thought that this answer was actually 9 made a classic mistake. And for those people, well, my hat's off to them because they made a classic mistake that actually made my top 10 list. This, in fact, is number 10. Just snuck in there. Just beat number out number 10. 11. I'm not even going to tell you what number 11 was. But anyway, this is the classic squaring a negative mistake. And the idea is saying negative 3 squared, just like that, equals 9. So always remember, a minus ain't squared unless it's been snared. A minus 8 squared unless it's been I didn't write them all, folks. A minus 8 squared unless it's been snared. Anyway, snared. so the point is the negative sign has to be in the parentheses with the exponent on the outside in order for that negative sign to actually be multiplied by itself. So how come this turns out to equal negative 9? That is, first do the 3 squared and stick on the, the negative sign. Well, actually, I could explain that to you in, in a way that I think will make a little bit of sense. In fact, this is an invisible coded message. Let me decode it for you. What this really is saying is the following. We have a negative 1 multiplied by 3 squared. That's what this is actually saying. So again, there's that invisible 1, that invisible friend that I have, <laughs> and it's a negative 1 that's multiplying this. Well, now you can see it's very clear, right? This is going to be a 9, and this is going to be a negative sign. So we see negative 9. And the thing that's very important is that order matters. In fact, what we have is that exponentiation always happens <coughs> excuse me, before you multiply. So the order of how you do algebraic steps, for example, if you're using a graphing calculator or even a non-graphing calculator, the, the computer, if it's reasonably smart, will actually know the right order how to do things. And the order is to always do exponentiation first and then do any multiplication second. So in fact, one thing to think about is that exponentiation or exponents always beat up multiplication, always beat up multiples. So it's really easy to see that, in fact, there's a difference between, between this kind of thing versus this kind of thing. So that's a good thing to know. OK, well, that's all I have to say about the very basics of exponentiation. And um, if you want to know more, keep searching. <laughs>